Hey guys, so I wanted to go ahead and film another video for you guys. Um, I did just order several Makeup Geek eyeshadows and I already had three of them. Um, and so it's not very many. I ordered, I guess, four new uh, pressed powders, two new of the pressed pigments and then one loose pigment. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys some swatches and show you guys which ones I did just purchase. Um, I have been for about two weeks, I guess, trying to figure out which ones I wanted to order um, because I find myself reaching for my Jaclyn Hill palette a lot and because I know so many of you couldn't get your hands on it because it, d it did sell out so fast, um, I don't want to reach for it every time I film a makeup tutorial on my channel and then you guys not be able to recreate it because you don't have the palette. So. I try to pick colors that I find I reach for in my Jaclyn Hill palette quite frequently. Um, I wanted to order those colors um, and then transition colors. I also had some Makeup Geek transi transition colors that were great that are amazing dupes for what I find in um, Jaclyn Hill's palette. And then I also wanted to get a few little fun things for you guys so that when I do film tutorials, in the future, um, I can reach for these Makeup Geek shadows, not just um, palettes that maybe aren't available anymore. So, with that being said, we're going to jump right into it. Okay, so, um, as I just talked about in one of my recent videos, I just ordered my very first Z palette, so I'm super excited about it, um, and I was able to order the single pans for, from Makeup Geek. Now, on the website, you can buy eyeshadows as either the single pan or you can buy them in a case. And I think um, if you buy them in a single, like as a single pan, it's $5.99 and maybe like a little bit more if you buy it in the case. The only thing that is not in this C palette is the loose pigment that comes in its own little container. So, first I'm going to tell you, talk about the three makeup eyeshadows that I already do have because I bought these probably about a year ago um, and they have made wonderful transition colors and I have used them so many times almost every time I do any eye look I reach for these colors um, because they are just great in the crease as transition colors they blend well with so many different other eyeshadows so um, I want to show you guys those. okay so the first shade is the shade beaches and cream and I did break it today of course <laughs> um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you guys anyway as best I can there you go. Sorry, I'm trying not to drop it. But as you can see, this is a super pale white. I'm going to go ahead and swatch it on the back of my hand. And this is what it looks like on the back of the hand. So you can hardly see it. It's super, super light, but it does make a really great transition shade. Sometimes I will use it um, to set the concealer or the uh, paint pot or whatever I put on my lid to prime my eye. I will sometimes set it with Beaches and Cream all over before I go in with any other shadows as opposed to using like a translucent setting powder or something. Sometimes I will use this. But this can also be used as a transition color in your crease. I do use it for that pretty often. It is very subtle and very light, so it's not gonna make that much of a difference. Uh, the lighter you are in complexion, the the less you'll be able to see it, sorry, um, and the darker you are, the more you'll be able to see it. So if you are a little bit lighter, you might want to use something that's a little bit more rich in color, like peach smoothie. That may show up a little bit better on you, um, but because I have about a medium skin tone, this is just subtle enough that it's going to barely give any color, but it's going to be great for going in with other colors in my crease as a great transition color. The next shade is the shade Creme Brulee, and I have talked about this on my channel before. I have used it on my channel before, um, and this is probably the most bought shadow by most people because it is so universal. It can be used on any skin tone. It is wonderful um, for the crease. It's a little bit darker than that Beaches in Cream, and um, it has like a caramelly undertone to it so as you can see it can definitely be used on those light and skin tone a lot better than the beaches and cream could be used i also want to mention that the shade creme brulee is a great dupe for the shade in the jack and hill palette right here that is called mfeo i swatched them next to each other for you guys to see so this is creme brulee 
and this is MFEO. As you can see, they are a little different, but they do serve the same purpose. And creme brulee was one of Jaclyn Hill's favorite colors um, by Makeup Geek, so if I had to guess, she probably did um, base that color in her palette off of it. The next shade I'm gonna talk about is the shade Frappe. It is a, another brown, of course, but it also does make a really good color in your crease. I wouldn't say that this is so much a transition color as it is a color that's really going to warm up your crease. Um, if you are darker in skin tone, it would be a great transition color for you. Um, however, for me personally, I like to put it either in my crease just to warm it up after I use a transition color or I will use it on my outer corner of my eye just to warm that up if I'm going in very light and very subtle with uh, browns and lighter colors in my crease. This will definitely warm up a look with that. This is a Frappe swatched for you guys. So as you can see, it is a little bit warmer than those first colors that I showed you. Um, again, it'll just be very nice to warm up any, lot, any eye look in your crease or in your outer corner. Next is the shade Chickadee, and this was definitely a color that was recommended by so many different people. It is a very pretty mustardy orange yellow. Um, it definitely has those yellow undertones, and it's beautiful in your crease. I have used colors like this for years um, just to take a light hand on a fluffy haired brush and just buff it into your crease. I am actually wearing this color on my eyes today, buffed into my crease just as I said. And this is what it looks like swatched. Um, this is Chickadee down below here and you can see those very pretty just orangey warm tones that is obviously going to bring lots of warmth to any eye look again this will look wonderful on any skin tone and it is very universal for any person that wants to use it the next shade that i got was americano and this along with coco bear is probably one of their um, most popular cells as far as deep rich browns go. Um, this round brown definitely has a purpley, plummy, reddish undertone. Um, I know that lots of people pair this with another shade of theirs called Cherry Cola, I believe, which does have a definitely a red undertone. But as you can see here, um, this shade, Americano, Definitely has some purpley, mauve undertones in it. It is very beautiful. I do um, have it on my eyes today, out on the outer corner, just kind of smoked out in my outer crease um, to bring some depth and dimension to my eyes. Anytime you put dark shades like this on the outer corner of your eyes, it is going to open up your eyes. Always, always, always dark corners on the outer dark colors on the outer corner and bright colors on the inner corner that will just open up your eyes and create a beautiful look um, so I loved this color to smoke out my outer crease I thought it would be beautiful and it absolutely was so I will definitely have to go back and get cherry cola as well to pair with it because it is a bit about the same just with a little bit more red as opposed to purple Next is the shade dirty martini and I was so excited to get this color oh it's beautiful. So greens have always been one of my favorite colors to wear on the eyes, especially because I have brown eyes. Green is very complimentary to my eyes, um, but it is not to say that it's not complimentary on anyone else's, but green really does look great on people with brown eyes. I thought I ordered um, another green that was a little bit darker. It's called Enchanted Forest. Um, I do know that it will look beautiful with this because it's a lot darker. Um, richer of a green. I mean, it's called Enchanted Forest. I think that kind of speaks for itself. But uh, this is a little bit lighter in color. Um, I think that this will be beautiful smoked out in your crease, especially if you put that dark, a darker green in your outer corner um, of your lid to really just smoke it out. I think it's going to be beautiful. This is what it looks like swatched. So it's almost like an army um, green with definitely hints of like olive in it. Um, I also think that this color will look really pretty with any type of brown eyeshadow that you want to pair it with. Um, maybe even a pop of like a light off white like shimmer color on your lid. I think that it would be absolutely stunning. So that is Dirty Martini. 
Okay, and now a fun color. This is the shade Dragonfly. I think it is so pretty. Um, it's definitely got hints of blue in it. It's got hints of green in it. I think that this color is gonna be so beautiful, smoked out on your lower lash line to add a little pop of color to any look. That is one of my favorite things to do. Um, it's so fun just to add a little color to any look by just smoking out your bottom lash line with like a purple or a blue or a green or whatever color you know your little heart desires. It's super fun and it definitely brings something different to any makeup look. It's definitely gonna make your eyes pop. So this is the shade Dragonfly. Yes, so pretty. As I said, hints of purple, I mean, hints of blue, hints of green. It's like a tealish color. It really reminds me of the shade Jada in the Jaclyn Hill palette, except I think it's a lot prettier. Um, this is the shade Jada in the palette, and I'm going to swatch it next to this color for you just so you guys can see um, when I saw this shade in her palette I was really excited because I thought it was beautiful but um, whenever I used it on my actual lid it just didn't I don't know maybe it, it didn't work as well for me they are very similar once you put them next to each other um, this top one is dragonfly and the bottom one is Jada so the first time I used Jada, I felt like it was a little choppy. Maybe I need to try it out again. Um, but it just doesn't feel as smooth as this Makeup Geek Dragonfly does, which was really shocking to me because the majority of the shades in that palette are so smooth and like buttery soft. They really, they really truly are. Um, but that shade, I think I need to give another try because the first time just didn't really go that well. So um, I'll definitely probably mix this dragonfly shade with the jada in that palette to see what happens because they are a little bit different but for the most part they are very similar so if you want a good dupe for that color um that is definitely a great dupe next i have two pressed pigments i believe they're called um and these i was probably the most excited about because when i watched people swatch these they just looked so beautiful um especially the first one I'm going to talk about, it, it looked stunning and it didn't fail when I got it in and I swatched it. It was just as stunning. I cannot wait to create a look around this color. I think it's going to be beautiful. So that is a fortune teller. And I mean, this color kind of speaks volumes for itself. It is a beautiful, beautiful gold um, shimmer. It is a pressed pigment, so it's going to obviously have some shimmer in it um, and have that shimmer effect. But I definitely see hints of like olive green in this that I just find to be beautiful. So this is what that looks like swatched. I mean, you really can't get anything more beautiful than that. I, I just think it is absolutely stunning. And that watch, that was one swatch. I'm gonna show you guys. So, a few little circles and then watch. Literally, like it's just perfect. Perfect. I mean, and then you can go back over it a few times if you want, but I definitely, um, and that's without a wet, wetting your brush or anything like that. Like that's literally just a finger swatch, which obviously, you know, doesn't do any justice to what eyes actually, to what eyeshadows, geez, how they get it together, to what eyeshadows actually look like um, whenever you put them on your eyes. So I can't imagine what that's going to look like wet on a brush um, all over your lid, it's it's gonna be beautiful. The other pressed pigment, I hope I'm saying that right, um, that I got is in the shade Masquerade. And, uh, okay, purples to me have always, have always been my favorite color to put on my eyes because as I said before, greens, like those dark army greens look really good on brown eyes. Purple is the color that I think looks the best on brown eyes. It just complements your eyes in a way that no other color does. So I was really excited and I have a purple look that I've been wanting to do, um, but I knew I was missing something to the look. And so whenever I saw this shade, I knew that I just like had to have it because um, this look that I want is, it, this color is gonna make that look so much better. It's gonna bring it to a different level. This is the purple. And so, as I said, it is a pressed pigment, so obviously it's gonna have that shimmer and that shine to it. And, you know, I almost think that this purple has like 
a flex, like flex of like a pinky iridescent in it. I don't know. It's just very different. It's very beautiful. Um, and I cannot wait to create a look with this. So stay tuned. Okay. And the last thing that I got was a loose pigment. And I was worried about getting this because I for some reason, loose pigments, they're just so hard to work with that I would so much rather a pressed pigment because I feel like that's just, it's so easier. It goes in your eye easier. You don't need the glue. You don't need anything like that. So I was kind of hesitant to buy this, but it was so beautiful and I just wanted to try it out. So I need to look um, deeper into what's the best way to apply this, but it is a beautiful color. Yes, so the shade is Utopia and it is like this gray, silver, green, it's a very strange color, um, and then when you open it, it, mine came with this little, I don't know what you call it, but this little screen thing. I guess it's a sifter, that's what it's called. So, um, I guess you can just stick your brush in there and it'll be a lot easier. Um, I do know that I've heard the best way to apply pigments and the best way I have discovered to apply them is by putting like glitter glue on your eyes or by putting lash glue on your eyes. Wetting your brush sometimes works, but with loose pigments, I think you need something a little bit stronger. Um, but I'm definitely going to have to look a little bit more into that. This color though, guys, so it has like bronzy. I put a little bit on my hand, if you can see that. And um, I'm just going to pat it out for you guys so you can see what it looks like if you just pat. Um, I know that with loose glitters like this, you don't want to rub. You always want to pat because um, that's the way you'll get the best payoff. So once you pat it, this is what the color looks like. And that is stunning. Obviously, it's like a bronzy gold with like a little bit of an olive tint underneath. Oh my goodness. I think this with um, the dirty martini shade and then maybe like a darker deep green, maybe like the Enchanted Forest, um, will look really, really great together. Even a black buffed out in your outer crease with this color is going to be so beautiful. So I um, definitely want to create a look with that soon. Hopefully I can do that for you guys and show you how it works, but I want to do a little bit more research on the best way to apply these. However, this is so beautiful. I believe the loose pigment is $9. And then I didn't mention, but the pressed pigments are $10. And then all the others are $5.99, I believe. So very reasonably priced. And all of the shades are so smooth and so buttery. And they blend out phenomenally from what I have experienced so far. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my little talk through on these Makeup Geek eyeshadows for you. Um, I do plan to order some more very soon, hopefully, and to create some looks incorporating um, many of these shadows that I have just recently purchased. Makeup Geek seems to be a great brand. Something else that I really did want to commend them on is their customer service I found is just phenomenal and as I've said before that is so important to me when I did order these I got them in very fast um, and it came with a note saying Holly thank you for your awesome support enjoy your new products Julia and the makeup geek team and so this is the card that I got in the mail and I know that that's it's so little and to some people it's so unimportant, but to me it's so important when you find companies and brands that are gonna be so kind and loving and go out of their way to let you know how much they appreciate you. You know, it just kind of makes you feel good that you're giving your money to a company like that, or at least it makes me feel good. So I commend Makeup Geek on the customer service that they do offer to their customers and to their wonderful formula of eyeshadows. Um, I've heard their brushes are great and their blushes. Oh, that's the next thing that I really want to order. So hopefully I can get that very soon. Um, and if I do, then I'll do another little run through of this. So if you guys liked this video if you liked this type of video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below I really want feedback I want to know the videos that you guys like and enjoy and what you want more of um, please subscribe to my channel so you can find out whenever I post more videos I will have several coming up in the next week so thank you again for watching please come back and see me and I love you bye